Folks, welcome into BetUS TV. I'm Kyle Proviance. He's base winner. And look who it is. We have a Corby Cheek sighting here on the baseball show. We are your Major League Baseball team for Thursday, April 4th. Tell you what, guys, it's been a lot of bad weather. It was brutal yesterday. You kind of know when there's a five-hour rain delay that you wish you didn't have any action on the game, right? Just You wonder, you know, I feel like it almost benefited the road team the delay right like they're they're in the hotel they're already sort of uncomfortable then you got the home team just kind of sludging around waiting for the game to start or maybe their kids were there then they had to leave and come back and just a whole bunch of nonsense so yeah you hate that we got a real small card today we've got a double header and i thought it'd be a good time to just sort of reinforce what we think about double headers for me it's not like as soon as i see it tigers mets the Mets have scored eight runs in four games this year. They've been absolutely abysmal. The Tigers have won these games, are 4 0, but aren't much better with 16 runs so far in the year. Uh, for me, double headers, especially early in, early in the day, unless I have a real clear sight on someone having a real advantage here, I really don't want much of a part of them. How do you approach double headers, B Dub? I usually don't play them, Kyle. I think, you yeah. know, and it gets, goes back to the, and that's one of the advantages of the, uh, of the baseball season, the, the length of it and how many games you have to, uh, to, to make, make a decision. And, you know, when, especially when you don't know, and sometimes I will, if I, you know, if Strider was, was pitching against, I don't know, Michael Kopech or something, I'd probably play the Braves, but uh, hmm. um, you look at a situation here and, and, and this happens a lot, I think in double hitters, you don't even know who the guys, the pitcher is going to be. And I don't even know if the teams know who the pitcher is going to be until the start of the game. Uh, and I'm very disappointed, Kyle. I, I don't know if you remember the Joey Buttafuoco scandal. Yeah, his game too, right? It's and, Joey, and, Joey and, Fudo, and and I yeah. can't get over. And I know the guys, the poor guys from Venezuela. It's Jose Boot O is how you pronounce it. But I just in my mind, it's Joey Buttafuoco. So disappointed that we. Well, I guess I did bring it up, so you you could uh, you know, throw in your your favorite joke uh, regarding that situation. But for me, I usually don't play him to answer your question. God, the Joey Buttafuoco. That was so long ago. You really aged. I, I don't even know if I was born yet, B-Dub. You know, this was uh, – I'm so young that I'm not sure I was alive for that. Uh, Corby, how about you? Uh, double headers. what do you think? And we remind you all to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. We're going to get to all – every game on the docket today we're going to get to, except for that game two, which they did announce pitchers for, by the way. We'll – I guess we can briefly touch on it. If you have a question on it, put it in the chat box. But get your questions in. The end of the show, of course, we go over the Q and A and get to all your questions. But Corby, what do you think? Your early doubleheader, two teams that aren't a lot of fun to watch either. No, just no, thank you. Yeah, I usually don't bet on like the major market of it, but secondary market, like uh, in a doubleheader, if a team is down a lot, they're going to probably put in pinch hitters. Um, so you can take advantage from like a player prop standpoint. Uh, it's all, all all relative. There's not like a general basis, but uh, more important, Kyle, I can't believe it's not the first thing we brought up on the show. You probably missed it because we hopped on this call basically at the same time. The Oakland Athletics are no longer. Did you see this? Oh, yeah. They're now they're, it's like a head brief Sacramento. stop Sac for four years or something, three years in Sacramento. Which means, hey, four. somebody in BetUS, go back, clip the video I made on the last show we did. I said they would not be playing in Vegas in 2025, minus 200. We'll take that. We'll take that. We'll put it on the show. We'll put it on my sheet. I need a win right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you do need a win. We need to get you some wins here. Um, our guy Kenny's in the chat box. Shout out to him hitting the Aaron Judge home run. It's that part of the year, right, where guys are like, okay, they're just due, right? They're due to do something. And I know it's a weird way to handicap, but sometimes it's just in your gut you see it. We talked about it the other day with Bryce Harper being 0 for 11. You knew he was going to go off. Joey Gallo was another example yesterday. He was like 0 for 12 on the year. He finally gets his first home run, gets a few hits. Now, you you know, you, you just expect him to get a home run or strike out every time. But it's that it's sort of that window, right, where guys are like, OK, I'm hitless here four or five games in. They're kind of due. I haven't hit a home run yet. We're due. Those sort of things are there. And we'll find them as we go. Yeah, the Sacramento A's. I'll tell you what I won't be doing is giving a damn about the A's in Sacramento. I don't give a damn about the A's in Oakland. I won't give a damn about the A's in Las Vegas. Hell, I wouldn't give a damn if the A's were playing right in the capital of heaven. And I don't know what that city's called. They're playing in the pearly gates and handing out free concessions. I still wouldn't give a damn about the A's because I think they're an embarrassment to all major sports. Just absolutely pathetic. And Sacramento, what a horrible city. Uh, just getting even worse now, adding the triple A major league A's. It's absolutely pathetic in my view. 
Let's go over our records and let's get into today's docket. And Trevor Van Van and Boss Jones, we're on the same page because I do think O'Neill Cruz is due as well. There's a record here. We're kind of uh, teetering on mediocrity this week after a hot start. Let's see if we can get uh, into the positive for the week. But overall, for the show, a week in, seven and a half units up. Uh, I think we would all take that if you uh, if you offered that to us before the show started. First game on the docket. We're going to talk game one here, this early game, 959-960. Casey Mize and the Tigers. Adrian Hauser and the Mets. Tigers at plus 117. The Mets are favorites here. The winless Mets at minus 127. Okay. Total of seven and a half, juice to the under. At minus 115, B-Dub, let's start with you here. Uh, the Mets are favored in both games of this doubleheader. Um, and as you mentioned, the second game, it's going to be Matt Manning on the mound for the Tigers and Jose Buto Butofuco. So the Mets haven't won a game. Their offense has been abysmal. They're hitting 188 as a team, but they're favored in both games. Am I missing something? I, I don't understand. Uh, I think that the Mets should be favored here, Kyle. So maybe maybe, maybe you are. I've got okay. a price at I got a price at minus 154. Uh, this Casey Mize, it's funny because uh, these two pitchers really bring up something in my mind outside of baseball. Casey Mize, of course, uh, the great golfer Larry Mize. Larry Mize, sure. And then and then Adrian Hauser. Now this will jog probably not your memory, Kyle. You may not know this, but Bob and Doug McKenzie. And it was Elsinore Brewing Company. It was a movie. And the, the, the tagline, they were a Canadian comedy team. And their tagline was, hey, you hoser. And so do you remember that at all, Kyle? Of course. I, so I have some Canadian friends, and uh, we call his dad the Silver Fox. And when he comes in, it's, we, we do the Canadian stir with our glasses where you just spin it in a circle and go, hey, you hoser. So, yes, I, yeah, well, unfortunately. So, I so, you, so you can appreciate Adrian Hauser and his numbers look like he's a hoser because if you look at his stuff plus it's in the 15th percentile hard hit per nine a 13.2 hard hit per per nine in the 12th percentile and having said all that he's rated uh, a better by my ratings than Casey Mize Um, so for me I'm not gonna I no, you know what I think I did put it out on the card I'm not sure Uh, I think actually I took it off the card at the last minute but I did think about playing the Mets and then I saw, and then I thought, why, why play the thing? So no play why? for me. And uh, uh, you know, I think that there's there's better value today on the card, and of course there'll be a lot better value during the season, Kyle. Yeah, this one. I mean, there is that. Okay, the Mets haven't won yet. They have the highest payroll in baseball, and their team's absolutely abysmal. They're hitting less. They're hitting 188 so far. That's only four games, but they have eight runs so far. I mean, we we've been in the league. You know this. The league's a week old. They've played four games and they have eight runs. So am I – why would I want – and I understand that I do think Hauser profiles a little bit better than Casey Mize. But I don't like either of these teams, quite frankly. I think the Tigers grossly overrated. They're 4-0 despite not – they just haven't allowed a lot of runs. Their pitching has been sensational. But uh, I, n- nothing excites me about either of these teams. Uh, what do you got on this one, Corby? Yeah, Casey Mize is interesting. Uh, an Auburn guy, so I've kind of seen his name for quite some time. Uh, I think he was the first overall pick in the draft. Am I wrong there? Uh, yeah, he was first overall pick in 2018. A guy who had talent, uh, kind of hasn't lived up to it. But in spring training, he hit 97 with his fastball, which is four miles per hour faster than last year. Sliders at 86, he throws a split finger, which is interesting. Uh, I think he has really good stuff. But it's one of those things like... Kind of like base runner said, like why I bet this first off. Second, like I, I need to see to believe. I, I do think inevitably Casey Mize is a decent pitcher. Um, but it just hasn't been proven yet. He's his extensions in the 95th percentile at 6'3. That's uh impressive to be able to throw that fast. Um and it's a guy that I think will be good. Um I'm not I was going to bet Casey Mize over three and a half strikeouts, but we see minus one fifty two and I I'll just be laying off that. But in the future, if he has a bad game here, I wouldn't be surprised if you see some value on a pitcher who the market probably regresses kind of like I do in a little bit today. Yeah. It's uh to me, it's kind of gross. And uh, Damian Edwards brings up a great point. The Tigers have played the white Sox. I mean, who cares that they're four? No, they, they, they beat maybe the second worst roster in all of baseball outside of the triple A. So uh, I did think it was interesting. Michael Kopech was closing for them the other day, which I thought was an interesting sort of, divergence in his career did you did you notice that yeah i, I wanted to hear yeah, your take I, on that i yeah because i noticed something and occasionally you can get something when you're watching uh because i had the braves and unfortunately they weren't able to get it done that night but uh what Kovic was doing was just throwing really and 
I'd like to get Corby's take on this too, because he's really into the stat cast numbers. Uh, and I think there's a way you can do a search on this, but he throws fastballs hard, really hard, a uh, hundred miles per hour. So, so props to him for that, but his location's right up middle of the plate upstairs. So my thought was he comes in to close uh, and you have the ability to find a batter or a team that hits those particular pitches very well. I think that could give you uh, some opportunity in the, in the live betting market. And I think that there's a way um, on the stat catch search board. It's a little bit complex. But maybe maybe not get into it on the show, but uh, uh, maybe, Corby, you could confirm whether you could uh, look up guys uh, who hit the high ball or a team collectively that hit the high ball very well. Yeah, I'm sure it's on StatCast somewhere. Uh, this is a guy in Kopech I've talked about all last year. I think his stuff at some point is it's kind of like Ashcraft. Like I you say he throws high upstairs. I'm not even sure that that's on purpose. Like if you if you watch him, it just kind of he just kind of slings the thing. Um and, and he has really good movement. He could throw hard as hell. It's just a, a an idea of is he ever going to uh, learn to locate? Uh, I'm sure you can look that up on Sidecast. I haven't. Um, one thing that he's really good at is painting the upstairs corner. And, and like it, that's a really tough thing to do. I just He puts himself in bad situations a lot. So I, I'm glad he's in the pen. He needs some time to figure out how to throw his, throw his stuff for five innings. But, um, I mean, I, I still think he has pretty good stuff. Um, we did have a question about this game, and it does start here in about an hour. So we'll just address it about maybe a yes runs first inning here at even money with these two pitchers. I wouldn't hate that, but again, it's crappy weather again. So I don't know that it's really run conducive here. Um, the Mets are certainly do. They haven't been hitting the ball very well. But uh, winds left to right at 10 miles an hour, cold weather. Uh, a later inning. I mean, it's still crappy weather out there on the East Coast, so I don't know if I'm jumping on a yes runs first inning. Any thoughts on that, base winner? Uh, I don't really have many, much thought on that, Kyle. I'm, I'm more thinking yeah. of the. I, I was looking at the uh, the Statcast search board uh, to see if you could uh, close in on those guys because I've never seen anything like it with Soroka. He was he kept going to the high ball. That's all he threw. And uh, so I think you guys, if you're interested in the chat box and, and, and getting a list or, or maybe the top three teams that hit uh, that particular uh, style of pitch, uh, I'll definitely endeavor to research that for you guys. Yeah, that'll be interesting. That, that'll be interesting for sure, especially late in the game, live betting spots, uh, late team totals, live betting team totals. If you have suppressed they're late in the game, that's something to keep an eye on. Corby, any thoughts on this yes runs first inning? Uh, even money, I think that's priced about right, but uh, I'm not sure, sure I'm jumping all over that considering the weather. Yeah, it looks like you're getting a decent price. At, at plus 100 uh, or even money, um, I would consider it. Not like It's not anything crazy. I think you're basically at zero percent edge. Looks like uh, sportsbooks like uh, FanDuel has it minus 113. So again, you're getting best price in mm -hmm. market. By using mm -hmm. bet US, I see minus one or three bet US. So uh, yeah, I think you're an okay price, but it's not anything I'm just running to jump the gun on. Yeah, and Larry Lenzak I think kind of nails it. Forty one degrees, noon start, four people in the stands, I'll pass. And that, that's a that's sort of I think Listen, that that was well said, Larry, right in the chat. <laughs> Larry nailed it. That Larry, was very well it. said. Yeah. Yeah. Early MVP. For purposes of this show, we have no official play on this first game, uh, but that does start here in about what fifty minutes. Or so. Next game on the docket, 951-952. Martin Perez and the Pirates, small favorites here at minus 127. The Old Testament, Josiah Gray and the Nationals at plus 117. Total of nine with some juice to the under at minus 125. All right, Corby, I want Pirates double result here at plus 140. Um Josiah Gray is interesting to me, and I do think O'Neill Cruz is due. The Pirates, of course, undefeated. They're off to a red-hot start. Of course, everyone saw that coming. We sort of talked about that. The Pirates could be kind of like they have these young players that once they start developing, they're going to be feisty, and they're hard to get out, and they're going to fight every day. I like the Pirates here. The problem I have with Josiah Gray, and I, they did a really good breakdown in the last game against the Reds uh, when he was pitching. And the problem I have with Josiah Gray is he, he has good movement side to side. His pitches will move left to right, but he gets that back leg so low that when he throws, he doesn't have any up and down movement on his pitches. It's all side to side. It comes on a flat trajectory and moves side to side. Once hitters get around here, they're just going to start smashing him. I like how the Pirates profile, when I look at the weighted OPS here today, 
Josiah Gray, one of the higher higher ones on the board at 859. When I look at Martin Perez, it's nothing great at 771. He's not a world beater by any stretch of the imagination, but I certainly like the Pirates lineup, certainly the power and, and the potential in the Pirates lineup more than the Nationals. And I don't like the, the lack of up and down vertical movement for Josiah Gray. And again, it comes from that low leg drive that he's got on that back leg. They did Again, they did a really good job breaking that down during the broadcast. But for me, I like the Pirates here. I like him in the first five. I think their bullpen's probably better than Washington's. I'm curious to hear base winner's uh, number on that. And I'm going to take the Pirates at plus 140 here. I'm taking an undefeated Pirates team red hot against the bad Nationals team, Corby. Plus 140. Uh, give it to me. What do you think on this one, Nationals Pirates? Yeah, sounds like you're becoming a stat cast guy. I love it. Mm. It's, uh, mm. Josiah Gray, and he's got he's got good stuff, but I do agree it's kind of one dimensional. Uh, you like to see these pitches kind of break both ways. You start to become dependent on horizontal, like a, a bat is horizontal, so you're not going to get as much swing and miss. You're just going to get soft contact right. or foul balls. Um, I do think he throws hard enough that in most cases you can get away with that, but he's kind of stopped even throwing the force him. His his primary pitch last year was the the slider, so. Do agree. He needs to bring a, a a fastball back. If I remember correctly, when he was at the Dodgers, he had a pretty solid fastball. So, do agree. Uh, what's the price you're getting on the double result? Plus one forty. Not bad. Um, it, yeah. It's an interesting spot. The this I actually talked about this before the show, but the the interesting thing for me, and if ever, anybody wants to, some degenerate action, Martin Perez is only projected two and a half strikeouts, uh, lean towards the over, and and not a very long leash to play baseball so i I think if you think the market is efficient which uh, you should taking exactly three strikeouts plus 300 is a pretty good bet Uh, i'm not going to bet it on the show but like i mean martin perez exactly three plus 300 sounds like a a number that i could definitely uh, nibble on a number we can nibble on we had a question too about this game asking about the team total excuse me this is another one where the weather is a problem they already think there could be a delay late start in this one um, I actually like the theory that I'm going to favor the road team for these ga- these road delays, for these game delays, because think about it. You're already uncomfortable. You've been staying at a hotel. It's not really home. But when you're the home team and you have a five-hour rain delay, you probably have kids and family coming to the park and going home and coming back, and you're kind of wishing you were at home. There's a lot. I think you're a lot more uncomfortable at home during a delay than you are on the road. That's just a theory of mine. But um, I don't mind this price. When I look at the run line now in the first five, it's minus – it's plus 125, so I don't mind just taking the minus 0.5 in the first five either. But what do you think about this one, B-Dub, Pirates Nationals? Uh, well, I have it priced at the Pirates at minus 175, so I agree with you. It was really hard. I almost thought about making this a show <laughs> play, and I just can't back Martin Perez. I mean, those guys who are out there who have been watching the show for the last three years, you knew Mar- Martin Perez was villain number I think he was villain number two, Paul Blackburn villain number one. Uh, two years ago. And if you look at his numbers, I, I you know, you can see why, because what happened with it, the re- reason he was a villain, Kyle, is I would play against him pretty much every time he came out and he would pretty much win every time he came out. Mm. Uh, but but if you look at the numbers he's amassed, they're not very impressive. 16.9 strikeout percentage uh, puts him in the lower quartile. In fact, 16% matches the strikeout rate, uh, his percentile rate as well. Uh, stuff plus four percentile. And I thought both of you guys did a great job uh, breaking down Hosea Gray because his stuff plus is 18 percentile. And uh, I, I thought that you articulated that really good, Kyle. Uh, so you got really two crappy pitchers. And so what do you do here? Well, the other the team that with the best offense by far, by my ratings, uh, is Pittsburgh. And, and they're 10 points higher from a runs created standpoint. Uh, base winner runs created, if you will, uh, then the the Nationals. And that's where the disparity is also. I think what's surprising about this game is we wouldn't think about uh, the Pirates' bullpen as a really top 10 bullpen, but yet, uh, by my numbers, they're rated number nine in baseball compared to the Washington bullpen rated number 21. So I do like your play, and I put it out on the card. Not a show play, uh, but I did. Uh, I do back you there, and I, I, I wish you, wish you luck on this one. Uh, let me answer this question for Ryan Lutton in the chat box as well. He says he's new to ba- betting baseball. What does a Pirates double result mean? And you're absolutely right. It's the first five money. You have to win the first five. It's essentially a same game parlay, taking the first five innings and then taking the full game. So that's what a double result means. And you typically, well, you always get a better number than you're going to get on a money line or or a first five. That's the idea. 
of it uh, taking the plus money. What I do, base winners laugh. What this did I do? This reminds me of the rap. Kick five nine, half full time. Kyle's gonna get it for you one more time. To the window, to the walls. Let's predict <laughs> these strikes and balls. There we go. Little mm. little preview to the uh, base winner wrap tomorrow. It's gonna be a flow oh. rider duty. Uh, uh, still, uh, still don't have. Uh, oh yeah, you just need me to do the intro, right? And what what's the name of the song again? In the air. In the air. In the air. In the air. All right, I'll get that jam in today. I'll have that jam in today. I'm making my specialty sandwiches today after the show. I like to dip my bread in this like brown sugar mix I make and toast it in the pan. It turns out beautiful. I learned a trick. Instead of using butter on your bread and then toasting it in the pan, mayonnaise on your bread and then toast it. It is absolutely delicious. Now, I promise you you're wrong. I promise you you're wrong, B-Dub. I saw if you try it once, you'll never go back. You'll never go back. I'm just telling you. You'll never, ever go back. For purposes of this show, I'm on the Pirates. These guys are back over here. I'm going to take the double result. That's at plus 140. Again, I do not hate taking the run line either in the first five here. You're getting a pretty good number on that, like between plus 120 and 126 across the market. Um, over at betustv.com slash join if you get in. It's at plus 126. So I understand not t- not risking the 15 cents. And you guys are wrong in the chat. I'm telling you right now, if you haven't done it, you're just wrong. You're just wrong. It's absolutely the way to do it. I'm voting yes on the poll. I'm giving myself a yes. I'm telling you, now people are getting it. The the mayo, it is. Ali gets it. No, he doesn't. Matt Brock gets it. I'm telling you, light mayonnaise, then toast it in the pan with like your bacon grease and some, uh, you know, whatever you have in there. Absolutely on fire. And you guys are wrong. I'm sorry. I will go to my, I will fight you over this. But nonetheless, I digress. 955. 956. Oh, Kenny just grossed me out. Oh, God, that's the grossest thing I've ever seen in the chat box. Tanner Bibby and the Guardians and at plus 131. Pablo Lopez and the Twins at minus 146. Total of seven and a half juice to the under at minus 115. We have someone saying I almost unsubscribed for that take. That's hilarious. We also have Kenny saying I coat my bread in the juice from the tuna can. Oh, my God. That made me throw up in my mouth some. That is absolutely foul. All right, B-Dub, you have an interesting play on this. And I have to say, by my numbers today, the pitcher with the lowest weighted OPS against the opposing lineup is indeed Tanner Bibby. I don't know if my model's broken or what the hell is going on here. Uh, Martin Perez looked really good in his first start. I mean, let's just call it what it was. He looked really, really good for the Twins. Uh, a little bit different today. No base runner parlay. B-Dub's changing it up today. What do you got on this one, Twins Guardians? Yeah, um, it's an interesting play. Um, I'm going to play the series at minus the Twins, minus 170. And I think what makes it even more interesting is just they're going to play today. There's not a game tomorrow, and then they're going to play Saturday and Sunday. And I, I want to bring more of these uh, series plays on, on a Friday uh, to people because it gives you something to root for on the weekend. So I think I think you'll see, uh, in addition to a base winner parlay, a series play uh, on Friday and every other Friday a base winner wrap. Um, if if you if you guys want it, if you guys don't, we can we can can the base winner wrap. That's something. It's 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 all about the chat box and and how many requests we get for the base winners wrap. Uh, but as far as this the the three games go, uh, in today's game, I've got it priced at minus one eighty eight. So there's value there up against the minus one forty seven in the market. Uh, I think tomorrow we're gonna or rather Saturday we're gonna see some value. It's gonna be Carlos Carrasco, who I really don't like by my numbers against Joe Ryan, who I do like. So I have that game priced at minus 211. And then in the, in the finale of the series, it's going to be Tristan McKenzie, who I like uh, better uh, than or as much as Bailey O'Bear. Anyway, I've got that priced uh, at minus 135. So it takes a little bit of uh, calculation. You have to know what binomial probability is. But uh, long story short, I've got the series priced at minus 233. and the market, it's minus 170. And so I think there's good value there. And just just a couple of points uh, before we move on from my analysis on this. Uh, I've got the the Twins rated better offensively, ninth versus Cleveland's offense, 16th. And uh, I've got the the Twins bullpen rated in its current state, and that's they're missing a couple guys, even better uh, than the Guardians. So Guardians have been been pretty good. I mean, obviously they're they're sitting at the yeah. top of the of the AL Central, but I don't think. 
I think it's somewhat of a mirage, and I'm going to take this opportunity. I, I think we're getting some value in the market with that series play, Kyle. Your uh, prodigal son, Scott D, says, my dad always thinking for the people. What a guy. And uh, it just cracks me up when he – the idea of him showing up at your door and then looking just like you, that, that's what I'm really hoping for is I want him to look just like Guile from Street Fighter 2. <laughs> and uh, we talked about – if you guys haven't – if you guys don't know who Guile is, pull it up and then pull up B-Dub and you'll just expect him to throw sonic booms all day long. Uh, what do you think about this, Kenny? So B-Dub's going the Twins to win the series at minus 170, paying the juice on it. Um, Pablo Lopez looked great, but Tanner Bibby, I, and I, again, I don't know if this is a two-year sample size here, but when I look at weighted OPS, just in terms of that number, it's a 628 for Tanner Bibby against this Twins lineup. Last year in three starts, he was mediocre, 24, 33, and 21 in terms of fantasy points. So I'm not quite understanding why, but um, they did make a point in the chat box that this Guardians team has lit up Pablo Lopez in 50 plate appearances by the com- projected lineup tonight. 21 of 50, a 420 average of Pablo Lopez. So tonight makes me a little bit nervous. Uh, what do you think here, Corby? Yeah, it's an interesting spot. I think, uh, yeah, Matt says in the chat, uh, Kyle called me Kenny. That's it's kind of messed oh, up, I'm but sorry. it's okay. Sorry, it's okay. Cool. Listen, it's Corby okay. Kenny, it's real quick. Oh, it's because because we forget. Kenny's, Kenny's, couple, couple Kenny's, really good play. Right? Well, who? Corby, well, here's, who? Yeah, you thing. get you here's get one thing. Aaron Judge home run, and then I get kicked to the yeah, curb. No, hey, no, I, no. Kenny's this, my this, plus first one. Of all, I'm thrown off about the disgusting tuna juice from the can, so I've just been thinking about that. And then when we talk Guardians, I think Kenny because he's big on the Guardians and took him preseason. So you know, I'm I'm an imperfect god, if you will. You know, my apologies. Yeah, and, and and I kind of agree that the Guardians have played. I I like the Guardians as well. I took Twins um, season wins under, but. I, I think base runner has a really good spot in this point. Um, from a pitching standpoint, this does feel like uh, Kenny says we're both handsome. I do agree. You really are. Um, you guys are so handsome. Both. I do agree from a starting pitching standpoint, this should be a twin series uh, through and through. The only worry that I have, and it's really not even a worry, but um, that one day off in between does give bullpens a little extra time to recover. And I think it's a Guardians team with someone like Eli Morgan, who if they need to go through a little bit of bulk, they have the ability to pitch them on Thursday, then Saturday. Um, but if, if that's what you're banking home on, then you're in trouble anyway. So I think if you see value in the twins and the guardians regressing, inevitably they're going to, uh, on paper, they just don't have that good of an offense. And, um, the twins at some point, they've got to stop striking out. Right. Like this is a team who, I mean, I think us three could probably go put up a better batting order at this point. Uh, I, I watched the, uh, Jacob Junis strikeout prop that I had the other day and, and, uh, he's not even good and struck out the five, six and seven man swinging. It's just like a, it's an order that that really struggles to have a, a middle grounds, but I do think they have the power inevitably, and they they will be fine. Yep, interesting AL Central matchup. Didn't think we'd be really saying that much this year. It's probably my least favorite division in all of baseball. But for purposes of the show, base winners locking in the Twins to win the series again. They're off day in the series tomorrow, then they finish it up during the weekend, and that's sitting at minus one seventy. Next game on the docket. <laughs> oh, here we go. 9-53, Ryan Weathers and the Marlins at plus 135. Lance Lynn and the Cardinals at minus 150. Total of eight and a half. Juice to the over a little bit here at minus 115. All right, Corby, let's go here. I took the Cardinals double result here at plus 115 by my numbers. Ryan Weathers' profile is worse against the Cardinals today than any other pitcher on the card. It's a 929 weighted OPS. I've got seven Cardinals with a 13% advantage or better in the lineup. It's actually weird. One of those hitters is not Nolan Arenado, who hits righties better than lefties. He's just one of those guys. And there's a few examples of that across the league. But for me, the Marlins, abysmal. The real Miami Marlins are finally standing up. Ryan Weathers, I don't want to say too much. And the Ed Bluss sighting has been found. We were getting worried about Ed Bluss. Apparently he was talking to his son. Like, this is why kids are the worst. You know, I have one too. It's like freaking kids, man. The worst. Taking me away from what's important. But uh, I took the cards here. I like the lineup better. I, Lance Lanny doesn't profile perfectly, but I certainly think he's better than Ryan Weathers here. Um, I'm taking the Cardinals plus 115 on the double result. What do you think about this one, Gorby? Yeah, I was really close to playing the Cardinals as well. I think this is a pretty good lineup. Um, I was doing a radio show for BetUS recently talking about the Cardinals, and they were they were like Debbie Downers on this team. And um, I, I get why, kind of, but it's one of those teams like in, in years past, 
the Yankees, even when the, they kind of stank, uh, stunk. Uh, the Padres, like this is a team who has explosive power that you really never want to be opposition of. Um, the big thing for me here is you listen to Ryan Weathers talk about his game in like these Marlins podcasts or whatever. He was on a radio show on ESPN like basically a week ago. And when he talks about how he's pitching and like what he learned year over year, it just sounds like somebody who has no clue what they're doing. Like when you talk to somebody who's like trying to get better at what they're a profession at and you hear him talk, you're like, no, dude, that's not at all what you need to solve. Like it, he was like, yeah, I'm starting to get more break on my breaking stuff. And it's like, that's not the issue, dude. The issue is you have a 10% walk rate and like you have no location and you get shelled because you go center of plate. It's not the breaking ball. It's the center of plate <laughs> stuff that really hurts you. So I agree. I think Weathers isn't good. Um, and, and inevitably he's going to get hit pretty hard. And this is a Cardinals lineup that can do it. Now, can Lance Lynn hold his own? I mean, who knows at this point, the blue collar pitcher himself, not confident that he, he has a ton in him. That's why I laid low, but I do think these Cardinals are nothing. Yeah. And sometimes I just get so distracted. The chat box is, is good. It's fun. It's fun sometimes just to, <laughs> just to, to watch it. And plus says, I told him never to call me again between eight and 9 a.m. Monday through Friday. And sometimes you got to give your kids tough love, you know, just like screw you kid. I think it's more important to start doing my favorite part of any movie is the end of Step Brothers, where they're just beating up all those like 11 year old kids. Cause there's nothing more annoying in the world than like kids between the ages of nine and 12, like nothing, nothing. I just can't, I have two twin nephews who were 10 and the thought of being around them just makes my skin crawl because they're so damn annoying i love you guys love you lane and everett and i apologize but oh spending time with kids between 9 and 12 absolutely terrible on to this game b-dub marlins cardinals i know lance lynn's not a world beater anymore by any stretch but he's better than ryan weathers right the numbers don't say that, Kyle. I've, you know, I'm going to play Miami on the card today, and it's it was I got to take a big gulp. Uh, but if you look, because Ryan Weathers always brings up the Rocky. Uh, oh, what do they call that? An, not an analogy, a, a, a trilogy. No, it's it wouldn't be a trilogy because there's like five of them. So I guess hmm. it, it brings up Carl Weathers, who you know oh, Apollo Creed too and, and soon, Rocky, too soon. and and I I. I can't get over that, but uh, you're looking at the strikeout numbers. A weather's at 19%. Well, that's not good, but Lynn is at 16.1%. His last 150 plate appearances. Uh, weather's edges Lynn in uh, stuff plus as well. And, uh, you know, you, you, you kind of think about this team, and there's, there's, there's offensively, there's a big gap there between the, the Cardinals and the Marlins. Um, but the bullpens, at least by my ratings, are, are, are pretty similar. And, and the edge in uh, starting pitching, it kind of kind of brings us down. I think it should be priced at minus 107. So uh, I did put it out on the card uh, today, but uh, it, it wasn't a show play. It wasn't even close to a show play. I don't think the, the, Mar- the Marlins are, are really hard subjectively uh, to want to back, Kyle. Yeah, it's the by, by my numbers, it's the worst pitching matchup on the card. An 814 weighted OPS for Lance Lynn, a 929 for Ryan Weathers. Um, I'm just, I, I think the Marlins are done. I don't see a lot of fight in that team. Uh, kind of feel bad for Jazz Chisel. Uh, I'm going to, for purposes of the show, I'm going to lock in the Cardinals and I'm going to take that double result at plus 115. Kenny gets it right. Lance Lynn's good for 15 Ks once a year. Now that's about what you get out of him now. It's these heavier pitchers too with the pace, right? We sort of talked about it. When you start getting fat out there, you know, and you're you're sweating, you know, miracle whip and you're choking on your gobble, like uh, it's hard to pitch faster, you know? So get in the gym and quit being such a slob. And you, you know what I mean? You're a major league pitcher. Have some pride. I don't know. I digress. Let's move on to the last Game on the dock at 9.57, 9.58. You've got Mike Soroka and the White Sox at plus 147. Seth Lugo and the Royals at minus 167. Total of 8.5 with some juice to the under at minus 120. Corby, let's go to you here. You've got a play in this one. It's the last game of the day. It's a real barn burner. Sox, Royals, what do you got on this one? Yeah, I, uh, I'm going to back my guy Soroka here, the old brave. Um, g- give me his over strikeouts. Uh, one issue, and kind of like why I've been turned for the last two commentaries, is Soroka just got nuked. Uh, it's went up 15 cents in the last like two minutes to the over. So the number we have on the show isn't the number you're going to be able to get. I've been looking for the best number to make this as fair as possible. But basically, Soroka is a guy who uh, obviously tore his Achilles, and everybody kind of knows about that. He's a good Braves pitcher. Um, and he came out last game 
threw zero strikeouts, got hit pretty hard, went 70, 70 pitches, I think it was four and a half innings. And um, everyone's going to see that and be like, this guy stinks. But the issue was he didn't go ahead and make you laughs, but he didn't get stretched out in spring training. Uh, I think mm. he went max 38 pitches. So then he comes into a first start, second second in the rotation, asked to pitch basically five innings. It's a tough spot. Uh, Maldonado, this is the first few times that they've got to work together. Maldonado, a great catcher, a pitcher's catcher. We all, all kind of know that. The big issue is they've faced the Tigers, who have a lot of really good lefties. Uh, I think there were six lefties in that lineup. Soroka's stuff breaks awfully versus lefties. He's historically done really bad versus lefties. Now he gets to face a Royals team who basically predominantly righties, I think, Bobby Witt has a chance to hit him pretty hard. Uh, lefties always do. But other than that, there's not many left-handed hitters that I'm too worried about. There should be six righties in the lineup. Uh, three and a half strikeouts seems really low. Uh, I took the plus 106. It looks like you can get a minus 104 right now, uh, which is fine. Uh, but also you can get Mike Soroka under 16 and a half outs, pitching outs. And though they kind of contradict each other, I do like him not to go greater than five innings. He really just hasn't been able to go far yet he hasn't been stretched out at all so if you want the bet us <laughs> pitching outs Damn under fi- under 16 and a half i think that's plenty fun i'm two percent less worse so i'm not even going to say and that's a good thing you know you don't necessarily want everyone that you're uh, backing <laughs> stretched out uh b-dub what do you think about this one uh it's interesting to mike soroka Soroka, if you remember, two, three years ago, was one of the better young arms in baseball pitching for the braves and he sort of got hurt came back last year for the braves didn't look great so it's still kind of the, – the book is still open, right, on what Soroka is going to be. And it's kind of hard to go over his last 150 plate appearances, I would imagine, because they're spread out over, what, like a two-, three-year sample. I don't even know if he faced 150 batters last year. Uh, so it gets a little d- bit difficult to handicap him. Am I crazy there? Yeah, no, no, it's a, it's a good thought. There are a lot of questions uh, regarding Soroka. I, I think the answers is I mean, what limited data that, that he does have – a 19.7% strikeout rate, which doesn't inspire a lot of confidence. But I think what's even worse is the uh, BBK at 0.54. And then if you compare him with Lugo, and Lugo, I would think that uh, by my numbers, and I just think if you think about him and, and really kind of paid attention to baseball over the last year, you would say that he's about average, maybe a little bit better than average. And that sure comes out uh, in the stats, you look at a 22.4% strikeout rate, 53 percentile, uh, 29, uh, 0.29 BBK. That's good. Stuff plus is a little bit surprising in a good way, 81st percentile. Uh, but taking a look at the at the other components of this game, uh, I'm not a fan of, of of either bullpen, and and that really kind of bore out last night in that Royals game. Uh, but I have the Royals 26th in baseball, but I have the White Sox 30th in baseball. And then uh, offensively, uh, both teams rated poorly. Uh, the Royals are 25th and the White Sox are last in baseball by my numbers. I've got a price at minus 229. Having said that, I, I really can't pull the trigger on the Royals minus 156. It's just it's too much to, uh, to lay, I think, for, for that particular team, Kyle. Yeah, and look for the if you're looking for the weighted OPS numbers here, I have a 930 for Soroka, which is just slightly worse than Ryan Weathers, and 710. It's actually uh, the second best on the card outside of Tanner Bibby for Seth Lugo for that what that's worth. And in his last three starts, he's been six innings or more in each of those last three games. So maybe a pitching advantage there for Lugo. Maybe you want to take like an under on the first five or an under on the Tiger or on the uh, White Sox rather. But for purposes of the show, Corby's taking over. Is that right? Over three and a half strikeouts for Soroka. And again, that's uh, the price has been moving. We have plus 106 there on the board. Now it's sitting, I believe he said something like minus 104. So somewhere in that range, head over to betustv.com slash join to get the best price on that. All right, it's Q&A time. And this is where I save your marriages and tell you how to raise your children and how to cook a sandwich properly. And telling you guys right now, you're wrong. I understand that it seems weird and I thought it was weird, too, that I had this pretty gal making me this chicken sandwich, and she takes the bread, and I ask her, what the hell are you doing? And she just said, just watch, and she slightly mayonnaises it, puts the sourdough down in the pan. It was the best sandwich bread I've ever had, and now I do it exclusively with all of my BLTs, and if you haven't tried it, I'm telling you, you're dead freaking wrong, okay? I'm telling you, you know, I'm getting old, I'm getting fat, you know, I like the happy lettuce, so I know it tastes good. Nonetheless, let's get to some of these questions here in the chat box our first question from the million dollar man's nephew kev dibiase better play pirates team total over four and a half or the game total over eight and a half 
Now, again, let me look at the weather here. It's not great weather. Um, rain, winds mostly left to right. <sighs> I would say probably I would rather take the eight and a half. It gives me a little bit more flexibility. I think you need the Pirates to get the five, but you don't necessarily, you know, if I don't know, that one's tough for me. I don't like totals at all this early in the year in the weather. I would just take the Pirates to win the game, but that's me. Any thoughts on this total here? What does the model say, B Dub? Yeah, if I played the total, I'd play, uh, given those two choices, I would go with the Pirates over four and a half. I've got 5.04 runs uh, projected with the Pirates. So, yeah, that would that that's how I would play it. Ed Bluss gets it. See, I knew someone would understand. Grilled cheese sandwich hack you will love. Spread mayo on the bread instead of that's ex- instead of the butter on the top. I'm telling you, the mayo and then toast it. It is bomb.com. It's bomb.com. All right, Corby, what do you think about the total here? Would you take the team total four and a half for the Pirates, or would you take the game eight and a half? Yeah, a couple things. First off, we have the most uh, live viewers we've had on the show yet, and uh, we're talking about grilled cheese sandwiches. So I appreciate so, everyone learning a, well, yesterday, something new. I think we, I think we clo- it was close yesterday because we were pretty high yesterday. Oh, nice. Hey, we're listen. Uh, you, you're going to learn baseball and how to make a sandwich correctly, apparently. So it's uh, yeah, yeah. a double hit. You're going to get all the information you need. But yeah, for here, if you can get an eight and a half, I mean, listen, again, I've said this a few times in the last few years, but like, if you're going to ask a question, like, try to have odds. It's kind of the most important of all of this. But if you can get an eight <laughs> and a half, I mean, Pinnacle's nine right now. So if you can get eight and a right. half, I think that's a pretty, pretty, pretty fine price. Yeah. Yeah. It's, again, I'd watch the weather there. Um, I don't hate the race to five, but again, rooting for a team to get five runs can be very, very frustrating when you're watching baseball. <laughs> I just, if you, especially if you're watching the game, uh, God, was it just the other day, Jonathan India, you know, first inning triple, and then he's complete asshole and doesn't slide into home. So you're like, okay, no outs runner at third. I'm getting a run this inning. Nope. It's major. And then the universe says, hold my beer and let me make baseball as dreadful as it can possibly be. And so that's what happens. Tyson, Tyson Spaulding said, this is my first live show. Welcome. We really appreciate uh, you being in here. And of course, get your questions in here in the chat box. We got a few minutes here. Don't forget to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, all that good stuff. Follow us on Twitter. That helps us out. We do appreciate it. Our next question from our guy, Damian Edwards. Thoughts on Royals minus 0.5 in the first five and a Pirates money line parlay at plus 245. I just told discuss that I I do Soroka. It's actually a pretty big pitching discrepancy in terms of weighted OPS between Soroka and Lugo. I like the Pirates. I think that's a, a good play. That's something I can get. I, I can back that. Uh, Royals first five on the run line and the Pirates money line plus 245. What do you think, B-Dub? Oh, it depends. Uh, it depends on what you're doing today, I guess. Uh, you know, if you're really like bored, I, I, I think it's a good play. It's probably the best you can make. I, this card is terrible. But, uh, sure. you know, Major League Baseball with this card, like, why not put some more games out on Thursday night? Now, these guys, this is I was getting pissed yesterday because, you know, you, you figure and, and from a logistic standpoint, the last if you're if you're if you're sharp, you could get, you know, the last two Thursdays. Uh, you free up. You say, well, I want to go watch March, March Madness with with my friends. And the wife's Ooh. like, OK, yeah, that's that sounds reasonable. I'll let you go. And I think I thought you could like maybe parlay it an extra an extra week. Say, well, March Madness again, even though they're not playing tonight. But I, I don't think the wife would check the schedule. And then you could go out and you mm. could watch the Thursday night Major League Baseball. But but they, but you can't because you get this White Sox Royals game. That's all you get. Yeah, and it kind of pisses me off, right? Because we just talked about this the other day. We've got a futures bet race to 10 wins. The Dodgers have played 7,000 games, and the Orioles have played like four. Like, you don't want to just go ahead and let the Orioles play today or all these other teams that have four games while the Dodgers have seven freaking games already? It's ridiculous. It's stupid scheduling. Major League Baseball is really – it's going to piss me off right now. I'm trying I'm trying to uh, not get too mad. But uh, what do you think about this, uh, Corby, this little parlay here, Royals first five, Pirates money line? I actually didn't know that uh, you all had Orioles first to ten wins. I also have that. I got it 30 to 1 in the offseason. So I've been pretty mad about but this. But it's dead. Uh, what, it's dead. Yeah, I've been mad the about scheduling. this weather system as well. It's yeah, not the, the weather's weather. kind of – It's Even if you look at the normal schedule by April 9th, which will be next Tuesday, the Orioles will play their 10th game. The Dodgers will be playing their 14th game on the same day. It's complete nonsense. It's bullshit, as far as I'm concerned. I think you it's have to handicap perfect. that before you well, make it. I, yeah, I didn't know. I just under, I underestimated the incompetence and the just the stupidity of the of the brass of Major League Baseball. 
And yes, that's on me. Yes, yes, it's on me. I'm I'm mad at baseball for having me to admit how dumb I am. And I just looked at the I just looked at the teams they were playing and didn't realize they were screwing us royally, just lead piping us from behind. But nonetheless, go ahead, Corby. Yeah, I uh, don't know what I'm going ahead on, but like, let's talk the, about the something. Royals. Right. The Royals uh, Pirates parlay. Yeah, yeah. Listen, Damien, you've been here long enough. You know, you know, you know what I'm going to say about betting this just random parlay. Like, if you see value in each side, bet it. Like, a base winner has a good thing going with his base winner parlay, but like, just to combine two, like, this is the most random. Like, I don't know. I uh, I'm going to have negative words. I ran the the true value of this <laughs> is two sixty five. So you're twenty cents off. Um, if you like mm. both. Bet them both bet them, at the best bet price them separately, possible. Blah, blah, blah. Here we go. Yep, yep, yep. We're, we knew it. We knew that was coming. And uh, <laughs> our next question from Ryan Lutton. I'm really starting to like first five money line parlays. Any suggestions on betting those or even first three? Me personally, I love first fives. The reason being, you know, basically usually know what you're handicapping. You have two starting pitches that you expect to get into the fifth inning and nothing more in today's sissified major league baseball i don't even know why you pay starting pitchers anymore they don't even barely go past five innings it's kind of ridiculous and uh it's weak it's weak in my view but uh i like it because you know what you're you're not necessary you're not getting into these bullpens and knowing where anyone's going to be the first three i don't know <laughs> to me i just see a lot of first three games that are tied at zero zero there, you know there's not a ton of runs early so i probably wouldn't touch i've never messed with the first three quite frankly but first five I like because you know what you're going to get typically and you're handicapping pitchers that you can get data on. So I do like do those first fives. I think that's a smart way to go, especially if you're new to baseball betting. For, focusing on first five is a smart way to go. What are your thoughts, B-Dub? I know. I think I think you you brought up a lot of interesting points. Uh, but for me, I like to I like to do it, especially uh, when the. When, when you have a really good pitcher like like a Zach Wheeler, and, and how many times have you seen him go out and throw up a zero, and then the the uh, the bullpen will, will will cough up the lead, and it's very frustrating. Uh, I do the first five uh, with good pitchers a lot in the base winner parlay for that reason. You know, you could get a push on it, and then when the other one wins, it's a half win, but it's better than watching a guy, you know, one hit a team, strike out 10, and then and then the bullpen cough it up at the end. So I, I like to use it when I'm doing the base winner parlay, particularly when I, I'm, I'm very fond or my numbers are very fond of, of a pitcher who uh, – usually a, a top-tier pitcher, Kyle. Yeah, all uh, uh, Kansas City yesterday, right? Cole Reagans, one hit him through six innings, and then his bullpen blows it for him late, and Baltimore pulls it out. Of course, I don't get the double result. Because they were they were lagging early, but uh, I think you bring up a good point. And first fives, first fives to me are a good foundation, especially if you're starting to bet baseball. It's it gives you you have a lot of information, and you're not going on the unknowns on who's coming out of the bullpen. Are they going to match up a lefty on lefty, then pull them? A lot of unknowns when you start getting into the bullpen. What are your thoughts on that, Corby? Yeah, agreed. I, I bet a lot of first five. It's usually first five run lines, um, and. The, the issue with first five is you'll see those kind of situations where uh, really good teams can't differentiate themselves that fast. Like, there are a lot of tied games through five. So you need to at least make sure there's projected to be a lot of runs. So like if you see me on a first five run line, usually it'll be a total of five or more. Um, if it's at four, four and a half, I usually try to lay low unless it's just a really big pitching mismatch. Uh, but a general use case, and I talked about one of these last year with Kyle's double result, but a general use case is if a first five, Money line and run line is within 50 cents. Basically, that's the buy price. So like if it's like what? Minus 170, it needs to be 120 run line uh, minimum yeah. to to buy. So pretty easy yep. use case. Uh, and if it fits that, it's not an awful bet. Yep, totally agree. Our last question, and then we will get out of here. Because um, I feel like we we talked about the Pirates to four and a half runs. Uh, the team total at four and a half, it's eesh, real dicey for me. But uh, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. I'd rather just take the Patriots or the Patriots, the Pirates. Double result. Um, our last question from the guys from uh, from the guys backstage. Do early MLB games make it acceptable to drink alcohol before noon? And the answer is absolutely. Of course it does. Uh, someone asked about what was in this awesome Ride the Lightning Metallica mug earlier. And it's just coffee with – it's mostly Jameson with a little bit of coffee. So there we go. That's how we rock and roll. That's my Bailey's is Jameson because – I have hair on my chest. You know, I'm not a sissy, so I throw I throw whiskey in there, not Bailey's. 
Uh, B-Dub, what do you think? Early MLB games make it okay to drink? What does Mrs. B-Dub think when B-Dub's hammering booze down before noon? I had to stop drinking about four years ago, but before that, <laughs> I drank enough for, for, for a, a more, more than one lifetime, let's just say that. But yesterday, watching that Indians game, early Major League Baseball, made me want to drink. Uh, it was, uh, I, I believe it was 8 nothing, uh, a, a starvation score, if you will, uh, mm. yesterday. And I was on the wrong side of that. So, But yeah, no, I think it's okay. I think it's okay. Corby, what do you think? How many times did you start drinking before? When's the last time Corby Craig started drinking before noon? I'm not, I'm not old enough to drink, so I, uh, I, haven't hit that, <laughs> right. I, I haven't hit that situation yet. Kyle, I got, uh, I got, I got one more thing. I, I said yep. in the chat. Yep. We, we, love it. Love does it, anybody, love it. anybody want a Japanese baseball banger? Can I add this to the live button? You we absolutely want, we want can. We won't add it Look live. We won't add it live. I love Allie here. Allie gets it, and Allie's got it figured out. This is what you got to do, although this can be scary. My ex-girlfriend was like this. He says, Thank thankfully, my wife is usually the one who drinks before noon, so I just follow suit. That's what's up. If you can get the missus to start hitting the boxed wine by 10 a.m., you're going to have a fun day and probably get a nap in by 2. You know, that's not bad. All right, let's hear the Japanese baseball banger, Corby. What do we got? All right, Allie, get the uh, live button behind the scenes. We're not actually going to put it on the sheet. And I'm not going to say any of these names right. All right, we got the <laughs> Yo, oh, Mur- God. the Yo, the Yo Murray Giants. I'm not going to say the second team. The Yo Murray mm-hmm. Giants. First five under three and a half minus one twenty on Bet US. Great bet. Uh, full game there is six. So do you think they're going to score four of the six runs um, in the first five innings? Don't. Um, and that is a, a really good bet. I made that four and a half. So three and a half, plenty fine. Take the under there. Yomira under the Yomira Giants in the Japanese league under three and a half at minus 120. Corby is loving that. Again, we thank you for all the questions. Gary Sween says wake and wake and bake and then bet. Don't hate that either. Of course, I love, you know, I like to bake muffins and stuff in the morning. I'm not insinuating anything there. Um, I have to wait till after the show or I can't read. There's so much going on. You know, I try to follow so much. So I can't necessarily wake and bake anymore. It's too, it's a little too early. I get up at like 530 or six. It's a little too early for me in my 40s. I'll start getting heartburned by 9 a.m. I don't need that in my life. That's all of our questions, though. We thank you all so, so much for watching. Let's go over our best bets and then get you out of here, get you ready for that game here in 10 minutes. Good luck to Ed Blust and his Mets. So B-Dub, changing it up a little bit, going with the Twins to win the series this weekend. Again, an off day tomorrow, so don't panic. They play today and then the two days over the weekend. He's got that at minus 170. I'm on a couple double results. The Pirates and the Cardinals at plus 140 and plus 115, respectfully. And Corby's on Mike Soroka over three and a half Ks. And of course, we're getting that anywhere from about minus 105 or so to the plus 106 range. Again, thank you all so, so much for watching. We'll be back tomorrow. Base winner wrap, the first base winner wrap of the year. Flow Rida in the air. I need to like write that down so I remember to listen to it in the air. Get that down. So be sure to join us tomorrow. Hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. Head over to betustv.com slash join. Get in on it. Of course, stay tuned in here at BetUS TV. We've got NBA, we've got baseball, we've got soccer, we've got football, college, basketball, everything you need right here at BetUS TV. For myself, base winner and Corby, have a great day and good luck on all your future wagers. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed the video, please give us a thumbs up below and make sure to hit that subscribe bell so you never miss a show. For more content like this across all major sports, head to BetUSTV.com. Best of luck with your bets.